Good morning, everybody. My name is Mark Watts. I am the course manager for the public services courses at Red Car and Cleveland College. Firstly, thank you for taking time out to come and have a look at this particular presentation on what we're doing to enable you to have a smooth transition towards joining us in September. Whilst we're going through this whole presentation, there is a question and answer live event that you can just put any particular questions that come up in your in your minds as we're talking or as I'm talking um, and please feel free to utilize this and at the end we'll go through some of those particular uh, answers to those questions. It's really really important and, and the aim of this is to fill you with um, a, an amount of information advice and guidance so that you're not even worrying about the smooth transition into um, our courses. So how it's going to run then, firstly, I'm going to hand over to our college principal, Jason Faulkner, and he's going to give you um, a little talk for a few minutes in relation to what we have here to offer you at Red Car and Cleveland College. So if you'd watch that first and then you can um, you can you can listen again to my dulcet tones. Thank you ever so much. No, I'm the principal here at the college. It is a bit strange. Um, in terms of welcoming you through through the video and through online. Normally we'd have you in the college getting a feel of the building and getting to meet your tutors in person as part of our welcome day. But today hopefully we will still meet your needs in ensuring we provide you with the information you need and the knowledge to ensure you start in September with us in a seamless way. You will have uh, received information regarding our seven day free bus pass uh, and that is seven days, that ability to get around uh, Red Curran East Cleveland and the Tees Valley on an evening and a weekend during term time is a fantastic opportunity for you to really get out of, of where you live and free uh, to you to use that. When you join us in September, um, the college will look slightly different. Uh, depends on what happens with the current social distancing rules. The college has been adapted for the current guidelines on social distance to ensure you're safe as we all can be in these um, these difficult times. It is important you take responsibility when you enter the building that you follow social distance and wash your hands regularly uh, and just you know make sure all of us are safe by following the rules that are set out and obviously as we get nearer to September um, the rules may have changed and we'll, we'll change with them to, to accommodate you at the college. Today, like I said, is about you getting to know uh, your tutor. It's about getting to ask questions. It's about getting to understand you know, what the course will entail when you come to join us. So it is important you take time to ask them questions, get to know the tutor and really find out what you need for when you come to college. Today's course will be the course from student services. Where you'll find out about the enrichment opportunities. You will find out about the student bursary any finances that are available to you, such as free school meals. And please, please take up them opportunities. You know, the, the money is there to support you as students at our college. You know, if you don't access that money, when we don't need, know you need that money. And what we have seen through these difficulty times is that people, sometimes people really struggle, um, you know, when they haven't got that, that finances available. So please, you know, with the student bursary to help you support you with kit and equipment, free school meals, the seven day bus pass, that's all there for you. And we're here to support you to have the best experience you can at the college. The college is about giving you life chances. It's about enabling you to take that next step. You know, you've finished GCSEs, no matter what your results, you know, because they'll come in August and they'll be what they'll be. What I can guarantee you now is that we'll be a place for you at the college. If you don't quite get them grades, then it mean, may mean you don't go straight on to level three. It may mean you're going at level two, but I can guarantee there's a place for you at the college. Obviously, we expect high standards at the college, so it is important that when you arrive at the college, you are punctual, you're appropriately dressed for your lessons, you wear the appropriate PPE, and you follow the college rules because it's important we're preparing you for work. And without the basic discipline standards, you won't succeed at work. So please use the college as that environment where you can develop your knowledge, your skills and your behaviours ready for the workplace, because that's what will set you apart 
from your peers when you start on that journey to employment or on the higher education or you want to fight for that place for an apprenticeship. Redcliffe and Cleveland College is here to support you. But a lot of what you do and a lot of what your achievements will be will be simply down to your hard work, your commitment and motivation. And I can say that from my personal experience. You succeed in life by hard work, commitment and dedication. So please take time today to speak to the tutors, ask questions, whether that be regarding the technical part of your qualification or your course, whether that be to do with free meals, bursary allowances, please ask them questions. What I would close by saying is study safe, study local and study at Redcliffe and Cleveland College. Thank you. So that's brilliant. So we've heard there from uh, Jason, the college principal, and what I want to do is I want to just now go through in particular the um, the course itself. Now I'm talking to uh, students of all different academic abilities here from level one to level three and I'll reiterate what Jason's just said there. If your gradings are what you envisaged, don't worry, we will have a place on our public service courses for you. It's incredibly important you take in what Jason said about the way that we have to run college through COVID-19 and it requires a high amount of discipline from our students to make sure this happens. So what I'm going to chat about is our courses and what, what we have to offer for you. I'm going to do it fairly generic in relation to that. And again, like I said, just pop up any questions that you seem uh, that you may seem uh, is appropriate and we'll answer answer those moving forward. So to start off with then, our course is designed to enable you to prepare you for the workplace within our public services. That's the police, prison service, our military, the Royal Air Force, the Royal Navy and the British Army. Um, and our fire and rescue services. Obviously, if I'm getting you ready for those particular workplaces, all of those have the backbone and ethos of discipline. So it's really, really important that we understand this straight off, because otherwise I won't be doing my job correctly in getting you ready. And I want to lead on to that a little bit more. My aim is to enable every single one of you to have the skills, knowledge, behaviours, and more importantly, confidence to be able to smash a public service interview. I will develop you over um, a minimum of two years to be able to get to that standard, whereby you will be able to look at the competition sat in a college in an interview room on a um, on a public services recruitment day, and know that you're going to beat them through confidence, personability, ability, and just downright effort. So it's a journey that you're going to go on when you come onto my courses. And I'm really, really passionate about it. Every single learner has it within them to be able to do that. And that's why I push you outside of your comfort zone. And in the end, you'll thank me for it. Why? because public services jobs are incredibly well paid. That's why a lot of people go for them. Not only are they well paid, at the end of it, you get a brilliant pension. And we'll look at that within one of the units that we sort of cover um, on our courses. So one of the first things students tend to ask, ask me is, well, how will I learn at college? What do I sort of do? Um, and this this year we're running our courses through a learning provider called NCFE. And that's brilliant because NCFE allow a lot of practical sessions to be taught. So you're not always just doing writing or listening to presentations, etc, etc. And that allows flexibility for the learner doesn't matter whether you've got a, a learning difficulty, we can get around that. 
doesn't matter if you think that you're not very good at something. Again, all I want is you to try 100%. An example, we do fitness, which I know is a bit of a black art to folk sometimes that are in secondary education. But one of the common traits of all our public services is you have to be able to pass a mandatory test to be able to get those jobs. Now, I can't lead the horse to water. I will take you on fitness sessions. But there's a degree whereby you've got to get the bug if you wish. And train yourself so that you become as fit as a fiddle, as fit as you can be. That way you will have the right mindset to be able to move forward and develop so that you can pass these mandatory tests. And it doesn't matter what course you do, we will be doing all of the mandatory fitness requirements for our public services. The course is roughly split between 50% practical side and 50% academic side, where we're, we're in classrooms doing PowerPoints, doing uh, computer-based learning, sometimes distance learning. Um, and again, I've spoken to a number of students previously. One of the things we do at Redcar and Cleveland College is we will be doing homework. And that's not to ask you about in any way, shape or form. What that is, is to be able for you to develop as an individual so that you will be better than the next candidate that the public service get to interview. That's how important it is. And also we give you homework to develop your critical thinking skills to look beyond what's in about in about Red Car in Cleveland. Our public services want people who are disciplined, but they also want people who have a wide outlook on a variety of different topics in and around what's going on both nationally and internationally. And when you come to do your interviews moving on, there are members of the public service that will ask you on your thoughts and opinions of, of national or international events. So we will look at that in, in some considerable detail. So how were you were assessed? Well, it's important that we talk about how our program is built. Our program is built on four parts. You've got your main qualification, which is your public service course. You've got English and maths sessions. If you haven't already got your GCSEs. You've got work experience which you have to do. It's a government mandate that you have to do um, 30 hours worth of work experience a year. And we'll introduce that when we do your induction. And we have enrichment and trips, which I'll talk about a little bit um, later on. So within that four sort of pillars, um, you'll be assessed on my course by what's called the portfolio of evidence. So there's no exams. All it is is you will be taught something, you'll be asked to, to do an assessment on it. And that evidence will build up depending on your level of understanding. You will either be awarded a pass, a merit, a distinction or uh, a resubmission. And the amount that you get is built up over the year for you to get a grade. And that grade will be the exact amount of points that will go towards whether you want to apply for university and I'll come on to that um, in a moment as well. Um, so first thing, no exams, which is brilliant. And again, my aim is to develop you academically because our public services need people who can write down things, talk about things, um, and calculate things that are legible, but also sometimes may be used as evidence within a court case. So it's very, very important that we need to understand how we how we can do this. No matter what level you, you're going on, we will have the next level for you. So for example, if you're starting at level two, complete that, you'll then go on to level three and do the two years course uh, course there. Those that are on level three in the second year, you'll be enrolled onto our extended diploma. And again, this will focus primar primarily on 
getting you ready to apply and then move on to the next steps, whether that's into vocation or into um, into your uh, university if you wish to go that particular particular route. Um, Alex has just come up with a question and I'll answer that um, on the question and answer sessions later on if you don't mind Alex but that's a great question. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> some folks often go um, well what kit equipment and uniform do I need? Now I'm really really mindful the fact that we're living through austerity and, and times are really difficult and COVID-19 has had a big impact on individuals' finances. However, I'm preparing you for the workplace and the workplace of all our public services has uniform. Whilst I'm not saying that, that, that you know, um, you need to, you need to buy hundreds and hundreds of pounds worth of uniform, I will go into the basics of what would be sort of required. Over the summer holidays, um, I'm negotiating with a uh, with a firm whereby we will get a uniform made up and that will be given to you on induction. It's then up to you to decide with your parents or guardians how much you want to spend on that uniform. But by the back end of September, we will be looking towards you all being in uniform on a daily basis. The uniform itself will be sport related. It won't be sort of shirt, tie, jacket, trousers, etc, etc. It will be a sports related uniform that again, you will be expected to look after. And what I mean by look after is keeping it clean, serviceable and ironed where needed to. Because again, we're then looking at standards of our public services. You wouldn't expect to see a firefighter turn up in, you know, grubby clothing or stand in front of a police officer um, and look at they've got egg down down the, the, the shirt because they've spilt the breakfast. So we'll be doing that as part of as part of the course. Um, also, you'll be doing outdoor activities. And those outdoor activities would require a basic set of um, of gear that will protect you. Now, I'm not going to take you up Everest, Ben Nevis or anything like that. We're going to go in and around the North Yorkshire Moors. So you would be sort of best off looking towards getting some adequate footwear and um, sort of training shoes aren't that adequate when the ground's sodden. Something like a waterproof jacket as well and a little day sack to put something in. Like I said, we're not going on any expeditions, but something basic like that. And what students have done in the past is beg, borrow and steal. I don't I don't mind. But for you to be able to do the units that I'm um, putting on, you need to have that basic amount of kit and equipment. So please bear that in mind moving on and have the conversation with your parents or guardians. Listen, I'm going to have to take out, you know, I'm going to have to get some money to be able to do this particular course. Now, those people that are struggling, Jason's already mentioned it about bursaries. Um, you'll get a talk in a bit about um, student services and what they can do in relation to, to people whose parents don't make a lot of money. And again, you'll have to individually look at that. But safe to say those folk that can, there is a minimum standard that, that is sort of there for you that I need you to, to, to take on board. So I'm giving you a couple of months to have a look at it. And it doesn't have to be sort of, you know, Berghaus K2 expedition sort of kit and equipment. We're going in and around the North Yorkshire Moors. So a base layer, um, a, a jacket, a waterproof jacket and some decent footwear will suffice. Um, sort of the, the units that we're going to the, that we're going to do, the variety depending on, and I'm not going to go through them necessarily individually. Um, at, at, Level two, I'm going to provide you with a basic introduction into, into what the public service is all about and develop you both professionally, personally and academically to be able to pass to move on to level three. At level three, it's a little bit more in depth, a little bit more academic. 
But what I do focus upon is the ethos of our public services, self-discipline, leadership, teamwork, working together as a team by doing things like coaching, um, physical robustness. And I like to have students on my course whereby they challenge themselves, set it, set this course out as a personal challenge to yourself to get better and better. And that way you will personally develop naturally. So it's really, really important that we understand where, where we are with that. Because like I said, I'm really passionate about youngsters fulfilling their potential, particularly in the public services. <clears throat> now then, the other side of it is that we'll develop transferable skills, such things like being able to communicate effectively. I have had students previously who cannot even stand up and talk in front of people, but they want to get into a job that requires that. So my job is to be able to put things in place whereby I will help you and guide you and support you to be able to do that. So when you come onto a public service interview, you're confident you're going to smash it. It's really, really important, therefore, that not only do you take part in all the academic stuff, but you take part in the sort of things that I put on that put you outside your comfort zone. Some of the parts of the, the one of the parts of the of the um, the course is enrichment. Within enrichment, I'll be taking you through um, <clears throat> some tutorials based upon key things that we have to teach you, such as the prevent safeguarding strategy, such as county lines, such as British values, and these things for the public services are incredibly important. Also within that, we'll be doing trips. Within our sort of academic year, we'll be looking at um, a trip to the capital city of London. And we'll be looking at visiting things like the House of Parliament. We'll be going, because why the House of Parliament? Well, they're our employers within the public service. Um, those that are on the policing part of the, the course will be visiting the, um, the, the uh, Court of Justice at the Old Bailey and look at a, a, a trial there. Um, last uh, year we went there, we were in the middle of a, of a terrorist trial where the, the, the accused was a member of the Islamic State and our students got so much from it. Um, it was a life experience, I suppose. Um, those wanting to join uh, the military will be going over to the uh, Imperial War Museum. Um, and again, looking at the, the, the changing of the guard at Buckingham Palace, no doubt. Um, <clears throat> in the second year of the level three course, we look at going um, external. So we will be looking to going into Europe. And again, this is one of the things that you need to sort of think about, about cost wise. Um, the important thing with that is the fact that think about it now so we can plan for uh, plan for later and these trips aren't just jollies they're linked to specific units that I'll be teaching that I'll be teaching you on top of that we get the public services into college where it's your opportunity to not only speak to them on a, on a sort of their level identify the problems that they have and how they've managed what's their individual journey so as well as that they'll be teaching you elements of what their job and roles are. And often we find that students get real, real benefit from um, from this. I don't want to really um, sort of say much more, to be honest. Um, except that as a, as a course manager, our, my students will be in as, as a minimum of four days a week Bear in mind is a minimum because you're going to be doing essentially on the level three courses, 12 units, um, which is which is quite considerable, but they will be enjoyable units. Don't look at this like it's some sort of punishment. You're here 
for you to take the next steps towards having a successful career that will set you up for the rest of your life. Um, the other sort of thing that I want to I want to talk about is I'll be going through on induction a great deal more than what I've said just 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 now. So please don't think of it that um, that's it. I'll be going into a, a considerable depth when we come to doing induction. That's all I'm going to say so far. Keep the questions coming in. There's some great questions being um, being asked and we'll cover that at the end. However, what we're going to um, move on to now is you're going to get a talk by Student Services. Now, Student Services are fabulous in supporting our students in college. They're an absolute lifeblood of, of you getting what you need. I'm all to do with teaching and academic they're all to help you in your personal administration. So what we're going to do, I'm going to hand you over now to our student services talk. Keep the questions coming in. services team. We want to make sure you have a great experience while you study at Redco and Cleveland College. We arrange loads of events and sessions which help you gain additional skills and have fun whilst doing it. These sessions allow you to make informed choices about your lifestyle, making sure your mind and body stay healthy and safe. We love putting on events like Freshers' Fair, a great opportunity for you to have fun at the start of a year. Respect Festival, where you can learn about others, their lifestyle and differences and the Progression Fair, which gives you the opportunity to plan your future, talk to universities and employers. We love students getting involved, so when you start in September, please come along to Student Services and say hi. Hi, my name is Yen and I work for the Student Services team. Yen Tang, my name is Yen Tang, and I work for the Student Services team. We're not lying in our notes, and we're very costly, but we want to be able to offer you the financial help and support that you need to help you to compensate on your studies. We encourage you never to complete an online bursary application form, as we offer help with free book travel to and from college, a weekly bursary for our 16 to 18 year old students. We charge their costs and meals while you attend college, but also discounts on course kits and equipment. Did you also know that the college has free Wi Fi, free print credits, free online resources, and free access to IT equipment? Don't forget to complete your online bursary form before September. Look out for our online videos which help and support you. And we look Hi, I'm Tom from the Tutorial and Enrichment Team and the Student Services Team. We want to make sure you have a great experience while you study at Redco and Cleveland College. We arrange loads of events and sessions which help you gain additional skills and have fun whilst doing it. These sessions allow you to make informed choices about your lifestyle, making sure your mind and body stay healthy and safe. We love putting on events like Freshers Fair, a great opportunity for you to have fun at the start of the year. Respect Festival, where you can learn about others, their lifestyle and differences and the Progression Fair, which gives you the opportunity to plan your future, talk to universities and employers. We love students getting involved, so when you start in September, please come along to Student Services and say hi. Hi, my name is Lorraine Preston and I work for Student Bursary as part of the Student Services team. We understand that coming to college can be very costly, but we want to be able to offer you the financial help and support that you need to help you just concentrate on your studies. We're encouraging everybody to complete an online bursary application form as we offer help with free bus travel to and from college, a weekly bursary for our 16 to 18 year old students, help with childcare costs and meals while you attend college, but also discounts on course kits and equipment. Did you also know that the college has free Wi-Fi, free print credits, free online resources and free access to IT equipment? Don't forget to complete your online bursary form before September Look out for our online videos which help and support you and we look forward to seeing you soon. 
Hi, I'm Alice, part of the careers team within Student Services at Red Crown Cleveland College and I'm here to give you some information on how you can make some informed choices about your future goals. You may already know what you want to do and just need some help and encouragement in planning how to get there or you're starting to think about your next steps and I can help you prepare for your future goals. I can explore lots of options with you to help you make the best decisions about moving on to more college courses or on to university. I can also help with job search skills such as where the jobs are, what jobs are available and what you can earn. Hi, I'm Jenny, I'm the Welfare Officer in the Student Services team. I'm part of a specialist team here to help you to stay safe and well whilst you're studying at college. Record College is committed to safeguarding and promoting your well-being so that you can focus on your studies. The team and I can refer you to specialist external services so that they can provide you with the support and advice that you may need. You can pop into the welfare team at any point. We also work closely with the tutors and they can bring you along if they feel you need our help. Thanks now, bye. Hi, I'm Helen Marnie. I'm a welfare officer in the student services team. I'm part of a specialist team here to help you to stay safe and well while you're studying at college. You can pop and see the welfare team at any point and we also work with all the tutors in college and they can bring you along if they know you need our help. Hi, I'm Tracy Williams, Surf Garden Officer in the Student Services team. I'm part of a specialist team here to support you to stay safe and well while studying in college. Redcar is committed to safeguarding you and to promote your well-being to allow you to focus on your studies. The team and I can refer you to specialist external services who can give you the advice and support you may need. So that's um, that's an introduction to the, the student services. The student services are there to support students in our college. Hi everyone, it's and again, the issue with student services is the fact that you need to engage with them because that will allow you a very, very smooth transition. On the back of that, then, what we're going to look at is we're going to look at the schools team and what they can do for you. Hi, everyone. It's Alice here from the skills team over at Red Crown Cleveland College. I hope you're all well. Uh, I just wanted to jump on and give a little update about enrolment today. Obviously, the past few months have been really strange for you. They've been really strange for all of us too. But we do want you to know that you have got your place here at Red Car and Cleveland College, no matter what your results are. You are fully supported by all of our teams. Um, with enrolment, we are still working out the ins and outs and everything like that. But you will receive a letter and it will have details on of the dates that you need to enrol, as well as how enrolment will take place. And it'll be really clear and it'll be really easy to follow to make the process as smooth as possible. Um, if you do have any questions about your course, anything to do with the course information or um, it might be other things that we're trying to do for you in, on campus, like your bus pass or your bursary. You can get in contact with our team at info at cleveland.ac.uk. As well as that, you can always contact us on our social media pages. Now, our social media pages are a really good way to keep up to date with everything that's going on in college on our end, as well as what you can look forward to when you start with us. Um, so if you search on any of your social media platforms at Red Car College, you'll find us on there. On every Tuesday, our team jumps onto the Instagram for a takeover as well and answers all of your burning questions so you can get a direct reply from us then too. Um, I hope you have a really nice summer. Enjoy your break and get ready for some hard work in, from September um, and take care. We'll hope to see you soon. Thank you. How brilliant was that? So again, you're you're hopefully getting the the, um, the message that this is a supporting environment for you. Uh, and again, the issue that we've got is that we are committed to making sure that the next steps that you take from school into further education is a transition that is run really, really smoothly. The sort of end of this particular briefing is 
for question and answer session. Uh, I'm going to go through sort of these. If you still want to keep asking questions, then that's fine as well. So I'm just going to go through them because obviously they're going to be um, a benefit for everybody. Um, first things first, I need a cup of tea. So, um, question, bear in mind COVID-19. How would physical activities go ahead? Great question this, because obviously COVID-19 has impacted everybody and the way that we, we operate. Um, the public services are just opening up their recruiting again based on the government guidelines and again the college follows government guidelines very very strict so how we would do our physical activities would be under strict guidelines and remember this is an evolving situation hopefully by september we could have some form of normality the issue being is though we don't at the minute and so we have planned both myself and the sports lecturers on how we're going to uh, introduce physical activities in a safer environment as possible i can't give you the definitive because i don't know yet how how this is going to impact us as, because as i said it's it's um, really really evolving on a on a daily and weekly basis um going back to the uniform topic if you have uniform from a cadet group that you were in is it okay to use unfortunately not because we distance ourselves uh, again because of of um, who the who the that particular cadet group is our uniform will be based around a sporting type track so it'll be um, hopefully some sort of nike equipment in a training sort of um, training sort of wear and it will have on emblazoned our red Cream claim college and public services on it so that it separates you from who all the other people in college are. And again, as I mentioned, the reason we have it is because I'm preparing you for the workplace. Every single day you go into your chosen vocation, you'll be wearing some type of uniform. So this is what I'm getting you ready. Remember, skills, knowledge, behaviours. Um, there may be a time, for example, whereby if we're going doing our um, um, adventurous activities you may want to use your boots or your waterproof equipment from that i don't mind that's that's cool yeah yeah um another question is any form of mentality training involved possibly prepare people for certain experiences we face in different roles in the public services that's a beauty question to be honest my curriculum planning is based upon allowing you to be able to be prepared for the workplace we look in certain cases about understanding behaviours, both as the participant and the person who is involved in it. We look at key themes about how the mind works, particularly in the policing course, and look at the reasons why people do things. So we do touch on elements of psychology. There's no sort of training per se we can do that because again everybody reacts in different ways however what i will do is i'll give you a variety of different scenarios to look at and think about how you would manage those particular scenarios and again as with all the public services after that we look at debriefing and part of the debriefing is how we we plan trauma management for the individuals of our public services that take part and we look at that in 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 um, significant detail question answered there uh our question asked there is is the public is the police cost different to the public services what's the difference again a great question that essentially our level three cohort will be split it'll be the level three ncfe qualification but half will be doing policing which is a specific base for the folk that want to get in the police force, but the rest will be doing public services. It's the same course, but split into specialisms. And the policing course, you will be coming together with the public services course for some units. However, it will be based upon, or there'll be a distinct difference between the policing and the, um, the, the public services. For example, 
the you won't learn about crime scene investigation on the public service course but you will learn about it on the policing so there is there are differences between the two courses for um, a number of units over both years and that's why we call it the policing qualification because that's what it is and a public service qualification so hopefully that's um that's answered that again just to reiterate it's a level three cohort broken down into two qualifications um in regard to uniform is the element of everyday kit or is it pt kit and civvies well again you'll see me cutting about in my uh, my tracksuit and the important thing is that i want you to be able to be comfortable doing um, academic and practical sessions so again you'll be required for you to um get this uniform and then look after it if that means taking it home washing it and putting it on the next day that's part of your administrative skills knowledge and behaviors that you would have within the public services some folk before have got bought two, two sets so that they can use it on a on a sort of daily uh, a daily basis so they've always got one set clean ready to go it doesn't put them under sort of any um any sort of pressures but again i'll come on to that in relation to um in relation to uh, induction uh what's this one with the bursary form is that for everybody to complete or just people that need some support wouldn't it be great if we could give everybody support um unfortunately it's not you have to or your parents or guardians have to have a specific income threshold um and the bursaries for people who fall below that particular threshold and again it's to help you with trips enrichment it's to uh, help you with kit and equipment so again those those students with with parent or guardian that are above the threshold unfortunately don't qualify for that particular um particular uh bursary unfortunately um question will i be able to change from public service to policing on enrollment day yeah you will do don't worry too much if i've interviewed you or one of my colleagues has interviewed you and you've had a change of mind don't worry too much about that all you need to do is just let us know on enrollment and we will do the um the, the crossover and again it's really it's really important that over the summer you take stock of where you want to go to these courses cost the taxpayer um sort of over four and a half thousand pound per individual now you think about that that's an awful lot of money that it's going to cost the taxpayer so i want you on the right course so you're not thinking oh crikey i want to do this or i want to do that in the future you need to be on the right course so have a think about it and then when you come in on enrollment if you want to change over then we can do it there and then uh <clears throat> regarding bus travel does a seven day free bus pass cover north yorkshire i've got students that travel to uh, traveling from whitby so i'm presuming that yes it does now i have to be brutally honest um i'm not a member of the student services but as far as i i understand um it covers north yorkshire because whitby's in in north yorkshire um And Connor's just replying to that particular uh, person individually. Well, I have the opportunity to have some personal training on my fitness. That's a great question. Um, we work very closely with our sports department who have personal trainers. They teach personal or they um, teach individuals to be personal trainers. And between myself and Graham, we look at putting personal trainers working with it, with our um, policing and public service students so they can develop <clears throat> their own individual training plan on the core on some of the courses that you would do you also have to plan your own training and this is uh, a brilliant way to be motivated and take control of your lives on how you want to get fit um, what type of things does the fitness consist of you'll be doing fitness every single week now the fitness can be very diverse 
for example, we have our football academy for those budding footballers, both male and female. And I've planned the I've planned the um, the curriculum so that our public service students can take part in that should they wish. Those people that don't take part in it can go down to our um, fitness suite and work on their own individualized training sessions by themselves. And again, it's it's a start point. I'm not bothered how fit you are. I'm not. But in two years time or three years time, you will be at a position whereby you'll be able to smash any public service fitness for the mandatory test that you have to do to join. So don't worry if oh I'm unfit or I'm I'm carrying a bit of bit of um, a bit of weight. I don't think I'll be able. To, I, I don't think I'll be able to do it. All I'm asking you is to try your best, stay motivated, and you will see improvements. You will see massive improvements. Even those folk that are incredibly fit now, you will see an improvement because of the regularity that we do things. Um, and again, one of the great things that we have on site is our trim trail or obstacle course and I will show you how to get over each particular obstacle and we'll start off doing it real slow time because again I'm getting you ready for joining occupations that have obstacles that they have to get over to be able for them to conduct their job and their duties. And then we'll go through it as a team and then we'll go through it carrying things over such things like boxes, such things like casualties. Because it's all the sort of things you do in your training in the public services. Um, will the uniform in policing and public services be the same? At the minute, um, I'm in discussion with the with the this, this company um, again. What we want it to do is we want it to reflect uniformality. Uh, and what I've had before is that some people started on the public service course and after two or three weeks, oh, I want to join the I want to join the policing. I want to join another course. We tend to keep it all the same because you're still a public services course at the end of the day. What kind of places we'll be doing? Uh, what kind of places will we be doing work experience? Um, work experience, as I touched on earlier on, is a is a government initiative. So every learner within FE has to do it. It's incredibly difficult. And again, I'll I sort of come on to this when we when we're on it on your enrollment. It's incredibly difficult because of the nature of the jobs you're going in to do work experience within the public services. And I've got some students who are members of the, um, the, the, the police cadets. That sort of thing will go down uh, as work experience. I've got some students who are um, army cadets, naval um, cadets. These will, things will go down as, um, as work experience. But the important thing is that we, in the first year, if it's your first year here, we will point you in the right direction and give you opportunities to log your minimum of 30 hours and I'll come on to that um, in significant detail on enrollment but safe to say don't be phoning up your local your local sort of prison and saying Mark my course student wants me to do work experience can I can I rock up at the front door of home house and start helping out don't sort of work like that because again we've got the risk assess everywhere where you go um when, uh, what is the average class size? Um, we're looking at class sizes of maximum of 18 uh, and it depends on enrollment, how many of the class, how many come out of the course, depend on what class sizes we have to do. Um, ideally 16 because 16 people can fit on a minibus, but when we take, take uh, people uh, out and about, um, so again, I like reduced class sizes. If we need to split groups, we'll split groups. It's as simple as that. Um, when is enrollment? Well, Connor will will um, will be able to fill you in in relation to that. Uh, and again, if you don't follow uh, on uh, any of the uh, the college on their social media, please ensure you do that because 
that will give you specific details of when and how you need to be in specific places. Um, and as he said there, letters will be sent out week commencing the 20th of July, when that will be. In regards to enrichment trip to London, you mentioned policing students will go, watch a court case, students interested in go, the imperial. where students go and the fire service go? Well, again, that's a, <coughs> that's a moot point. We, we can obviously cover all our public services, but safe to say that the folks for the interesting things like the fire service or the prison service, there will be trips laid on to those specific events. Now, the thing about it is everybody takes part in it. And this goes back to what I said about understanding how the public services work. There are certain things like the units that you'll be covering will be understanding how the emergency services and the military work together. Um, so if you're interested in such things like the prison service or the fire service, don't worry too much about it. Um, you will get specific examples of, of how they do. It's just I can't put on a trip. It's physically impossible to put on a trip to see, you know, every sort of cultural landmark in and around the cover all, all bases. We couldn't maybe go to the site of the, of, of the um, you know, the Great Fire of London. I don't know. Um, but safe to say we, we, we will do something in, in relation to that. What was I going to say there? Some train of thought somewhere. Yeah, and that, that, that's important. I've tailored the curriculum so that it covers on the public services and our policing, particularly the public services, the variety of uh, jobs that are available. So, for example, one of the one of the units may be um, understanding um, disaster management. The fire service play a particular role of that. If we're looking at, for example, custodial care, the military deal with custodial care, the police deal with custodial care, the prison officers deal with custodial care. So I pick units that have a depth and breadth across all of our sort of public services. Um, that's all the questions uh, that have come in, actually. Now, you all should have my email address and you should all have got the um, the work that I sent out. And if possible, um, you can return that on the email address. My, um, in closing then, feel free to email me um, over the summer period if you're struggling with anything that, that um, I've either said or you don't understand anything in particular. Um, however, do bear in mind that despite COVID, I will be um, away on holiday. Um, that said, I will pick up my emails periodically. Um, it won't be on sort of, you know, pinging up straight away. I'll be doing it every couple of days. So I wouldn't have forgot about you, but I will pick them up and get back to you um, eventually. Thank you for sticking with it. It's been really, really beneficial. And hopefully you're looking forward to coming on the courses that we are providing. Remember what my aim is as a lecturer, to get you to be able to smash a public service interview to get you on that job that will stand you in good stead for 40 years and have a brilliant pension at the end of it. Again, the issue there is I can only do so much. It's got to have your own individualised self-discipline and self-motivation for this to work. So please, please, please have a think about it over the summer and think about how motivated you're going to be in September to hit the deck running. That's all I have to say. So thank you ever so much for taking part and look forward to seeing you in September. So stay safe, everyone.